Uh, well, uh, hello and how are you? Hey, friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Prisco, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Hey, this here is uh, Wednesday, October 25th, 2017, V-Blog number 2,249. Got a couple of happy birthday shout-outs, one going out to Chad Porter and one going out to Steve Stahl. And so, without further ado, here are a birthday song for you. I said, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, Chad and Steve, there's a one more year gone away. So, happy birthday to you today. I said, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, there's one more year gone away. So, happy birthday to you today. And many more. Yeah, cha 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 cha. Hey, you know what? I, I'm getting to a point where I, I'm thinking that the news is ridiculous. A warning went out yesterday uh, to the parents that were going to be dressing their children, their daughters up as like the Disney character Mulana. Well, that was going. Uh, they said that it was going to be a offensive to the Polynesian culture. Now, this is kind of getting ridiculous, don't you think? I mean, of all things, it's a Disney character. Why would anybody want to, why would the Polynesians even worry about it? It's it's a cartoon character. It's like um, dressing your kids up like Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. And see that? Well, I believe that, uh, I mean, I just so happens that my kids have been dressing up like bears for years and now I was out in the woods early this morning and was confronted by a bear and he told me that by me allowing my children to dress up like bears that uh, I was uh, disrespectful to the bear population and so therefore after apologizing profusely to the bear for disrespecting their cultural diversity, I noted to him that I should probably maybe have them dress up like a different animal, possibly a skunk. And so I turned around, and unfortunately there was a skunk standing right behind me who had overheard our conversation. And, well, a whole brand new conversation started, and you know where that led. Anyway, let's do some upcoming events. Alrighty. Alrighty then. How about the 7th Annual Dark Carnival? October 25th. That'd be today. From 7 to 11. 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Get on out there and enjoy the Linden... Lindenwood University. Go to sleep. Oh, psh, a lot of good that'll do. So, if you probably want to get on over to that and enjoy that today, uh, today um, it's one night of the year. Our community unites and presents the a fun-filled, free fun-filled night of the entertainment for uh, not only the Linwood University, but the students. The, not only the students from the college but also the community of St. Charles. Last year's event included over 80 booths from different student organizations and local businesses that included carnival games, free raffles, and other attractions including a four-story haunted house appropriate for all ages. The Dark Carnival is being held uh, from 7 to 11 p.m. tonight so get on over there and enjoy that. And how about that? Legends and lanterns, that's right, uh, the 27th and 28th and 29th will be the remaining nights for Legends and Lanterns, reoccurring daily, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Friday, from Saturday, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., located on Main Street in St. Charles. That's right, downtown Main Street. Come on down and enjoy the festivities there. You'll be running into ghosts and goblins and 
and uh, characters from the Brothers Grimm fairy tales and uh, from American ghost stories. From back in the 1910s through the 1930s, uh, the festival will also feature scarecrows and hayrides throughout history and the ghostly guests with historic Main Street as its uh, backdrop. And then the Pumpkin Glow. Yes, Pumpkin Glow is also going to be uh, held on October 27th and 28th on Main Street. Uh, don't you just love it when me, when the way Main Street looks when it is illuminated? Well, join us for this historic St. Charles Pumpkin Glow. Shops will be open late and come and enjoy the enchanting sights of hundreds of glowing pumpkins along the street. Two days only, Friday, October 27th and Saturday, October 28th. Bring your camera. Many stores will be giving away samples and doing demonstrations. It is the weekend before Halloween, not the weekend of Halloween, or the week of, not the day of Halloween, which will be uh, Tuesday, October 31st, uh, which will uh, also be the day for Halloween Hoopla, October 31st from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, in Frontier Park will be Halloween Hoopla over at the uh, depot. Friendly ghosts, Halloween, uh, howling goblins, and you are invited to the Halloween Hoopla in Frontier Park, sponsored by the St. Charles Parks and Recreation Department. Drop on by while you're out trick-or-treating or along Main Street or before you go for the evening. Uh, we'll have the bubble bus, uh, games, and other family activities for t all to enjoy. We are excited for all you pumpkins to stop by and show off your costumes. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then other than the Halloween hoopla is, um, the, uh, Main Street Trick or Treats. Oops. Tricks or Treats on Main. Let's go. Come on. There. Trick or Treat on Main. That's right. Trick or Treat on Main from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, bring your uh, children um, up to 12. Uh, your, bring your costumed ghouls and goblins ages 12 years and or younger to Main Street Historic District from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. on um, October 31st, 2017. And that's about it. Oh, you know, we lost another one today. That would be Fats Domino. Yes, Fats Domino. Uh, born Antonio Dominique Junior Domino, Dominique Domino Junior, A.K.A. Fats, uh, was born uh, February twenty sixth, nineteen twenty eight, and died yesterday, early in the morning or late in the evening. So that would make it today, pretty much. We'll have to give it. We'll have to give it. He died yesterday, and I'm going to do a tribute to him today. Um, he used to perform, he had, uh, 35 records in the U.S. Billboard Top 40, and, uh, five of his pre-1955 records sold more than a million copies, being certified gold. He was a songwriter of Louisiana Creole, uh, descent. And from 1955 through 60, he had... 11 top 10 hits and his record sales were rapidly surpassed by only by Elvis Presley during his career Domino uh, sold over 65 million records his music style was based on traditional rhythm and blues accompanied by saxophones bass piano electric guitar and drum so I'm going to do a few Fats Domino's tunes for you. How about uh, Richie Cunningham's uh, theme song? We'll do that one first. Blueberry Hill. I found 
I want to hold your hand. Please let me hold your hand. You're so good looking to me. Hoo-wee. I saw you walking alone. That's why I'm walking. I'll walk you home. So let me walk you home. I want, please let me walk you home. I want to walk you home. Please let me walk you home. You're so good looking to me. Hooey. I saw you walking alone. That's why when I walk you home. That's why I want to walk a you home. That's why I want to walk a you home. That's why I want to walk a you home. Uh, let me see. Oh, do 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 do. How about this one? You made me cry when you said goodbye. Ain't that a shame? My tears fell like rain. Ain't that a shame? You're the one to blame. You broke my heart. When you said we'll part, ain't that a shame? My tears fell like rain, ain't that a shame? You're the one to blame. Oh well, goodbye, although. I'll cry, ain't that a shame? When I fear they fell like rain, ain't that a shame? Alrighty, hey folks, well, it looks like it's about time for our part of the program called Our Daily Bread. And so. That was our tribute to the late, great Fats Domino. He's up there and singing the blues in heaven right now. And he regained his self, his junior pride, his, his junior look and his junior vibe. He's rocking it out in heaven up above. All righty, hey, uh, you know what? We should do the sinner's prayer before we get started here. So if you follow after me, we'll go ahead and do so. Forgive me, Father God, for I have sinned. Please cleanse my soul and relieve me of the guilt and the penalties. I will stop doing evil and I will start doing good. And I believe in my heart that God has risen Jesus from the dead and that he now sits at the right hand side of God in heaven up above. Now I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And so therefore I know that I am saved in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And they all said, Amen. Alrighty, today is, uh, the devotion is called Surviving the Wilderness. Surviving the Wilderness ain't no easy task uh, if you uh, get yourself stranded out there. But hey, you know what? It can be done and anything can be done with the help of Jesus Christ our Lord. First off, with the help of God our Father up in heaven. He will send down his angels, and the only way to get to him is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, anyway, uh, I will be reading Exodus 17, 1 through 7, and if you're keeping up with your Bible in a year, uh, you'll be reading Jeremiah 6 through 8, and 1 Timothy 5. Uh, yeah, the ultimate survival in the wilderness. That would be Exodus, that's for sure. They had to spend 40 days and 40, uh, I mean, they spent, uh, I don't know how long out in the wilderness. 
It was a long time, I know that much. Anyway, here, uh, Exodus 17, 1 through 7. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin, according to the command of the Lord, and camped at Rebetham, Rebeth, Rebethidim, yeah, Rebethidim. And there was no water for the people to drink, and therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted therefore water people thirsted there for water, and they grumbled against Moses, and said, Why now have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst so Moses cried out to the Lord saying what shall I do to these people a little more and they will stone me then the Lord said to Moses pass before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand your staff with which you struck the Nile, and go, and behold, I will stand before you, and there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He named the place Mesha, and Meribah, because of the quarrel of the sons of Israel, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? And so therefore you have it, Exodus 17, 1 through 7. So I've got one more song to sing, and that would be, Well, goodbye, my friends, it's time to go. I said goodbye, my friends, it's time to go. Oh, I hate to leave you, but I really must go. Goodbye, my friends, goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you? And thanks for tuning in to the Shen Show. And again, as always, you know God loves you and so do I. So be blessed in Jesus' name and come back and see me again tomorrow because, well, I'll be here, and I hope you are, too.